David Moran, um, is it through the use of DNA that we're able to do these things? Well, so far, most of the Innocence projects that have sprung up around the country, like the project at Cooley that Marla is working with, are, are DNA-based projects. Mm -hmm. uh, but what the DNA projects have shown us is that there are a lot of wrongfully convicted people in prison. There have been nationwide about 250 who have been exonerated through DNA. But what we know is that the vast majority of people in prison who are innocent don't have any possibility of finding DNA that can exonerate them because they were convicted of crimes in which the perpetrator left behind no biological evidence at all. So where do you start? So at Michigan, uh, with Bridget McCormick, we've started a new clinic that uh, will actually open its doors in January that is a strictly non-DNA innocence clinic. So we're exactly complementary to Marla's clinic. Uh, where we will do other kinds of investigation to try and exonerate people, for example, who've been convicted of armed robbery as a crime in which the perpetrator almost never leaves behind any DNA. Most burglaries, economic crimes, fraud, embezzlement, right. larceny. Uh, and so we will, we will reinvestigate those cases where there's a plausible claim of innocence and some way for us to litigate it. We'll go back and talk to witnesses. We'll look for other forms of forensic evidence. We'll reinvestigate the case. Now we get to the top.